Lesson 7-3, using similar right triangles to solve problems. First, we'll start with a theorem. It says that if an altitude is drawn to the hypotenuse of a right triangle, that is, from the vertex of the right angle down to the hypotenuse, CD would be our altitude, then the two triangles formed, a small and a medium, are similar to the original triangle and then to each other also. So let's look at our three triangles. We've got triangle ABC, which is the large one, we have a medium-sized triangle, which is triangle ACD. Notice D is the right angle of this one. And we have a small one, triangle CBD, where D is the right angle of this one. What this theorem simply states is that medium triangle is similar to the original, that small triangle is similar to the original, and the medium triangle is similar to the small triangle. So let's identify the similar triangles in this diagram. Notice we have a right triangle with right angle T with an altitude TU drawn to the hypotenuse. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up three triangles. I'm going to set up a large right triangle. I'm going to set up a medium size right triangle. And then I'm going to set up a smaller right triangle. Now I'm going to label these so I can get my corresponding parts. This is R, S, T with the right angle at T. For my medium size from here, here, and here, then U is my right angle. Notice that R is a part of this triangle and also this one, so my R will go here and that leaves T for up here. In my small triangle, I notice that U is the right angle here also. But this time, the one that is similar is the S. It is the same angle as this one, so S will go up here, and that puts T down here for the small triangle. So my similarity statement, triangle RST is similar to triangle RTU, which is also similar to triangle TSU. So all three triangles are similar to one another. So how will we use this? Find the length of the altitude of the hypotenuse here will help us get the entire depth of this swimming pool. So this part all added together. First thing I'm going to do is set me up two similar triangles. I'm going to sketch them, draw a proportion, and solve the problem. The first triangle I look at is the large one, R. S, T. I know all three sides of that one. Now I could either use the medium or the small triangle. In this case I chose to use the medium one which is R, T, M. M being the right angle and notice I set them up oriented in the same way. Labeling this one I can see that H is to 64 as 152 is to 165. So I simply find my cross product and find out that H is approximately 59 inches and therefore the entire thing is the H plus the 48 which would be 107 inches. So identifying the similar triangles then find the value of X so you need to identify two similar triangles set up a proportion and then solve to find X. Hopefully you've done that now and you can check your work here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the large triangle EFG, EFG, and label it 354, and I'm using EGH, which is the small triangle here. So I've got EGH, where H is the right angle here. EG is 3, and I'm looking for HG, that's X. And so I can see that x is to 4 as 3 is to 5. I can do my cross product and find out that x is 2.4. Here's another one for you to try. Okay, hopefully you've gotten it by now. We're going to set up two similar triangles. We'll use JLM, triangle JLM. And the other triangle we're going to use is JMK. And in this case, JMK is my medium one. J is in the same place. The right angle is at K. 
so that puts M here. When we label it, this is 13, 5, and 12. I'm looking for KM, so my X goes here. What I know is KJ, so my, excuse me, I know JM, which is 12. And so I can set up my proportion. X is to 5, as 12 is to 13. And when I solve, I say it's approximately 4.61. Remember chapter 6, we learned that when the means of proportion are equal, solving the proportion gives you what's called the geometric mean of the extremes. In other words, if I have the extremes are A and B, and the means are both X, then X is equal to the square root of A times B. Or we can look at it in terms of the proportion. 4 is to x as x is to 9. So a and b is 4 and 9 in this case. If we do our cross product and then take the square root, we see that x is 6. So 6 is the geometric mean of 4 and 9. In this case, it would be x is equal to the square root of 4 times 9. It gives us 6. Let's look at some proportions formed by the corresponding sides of this triangle. Now, we're going to look at three different situations, and it may look a little complicated, but try to follow along, and then I will try to sum it up with some theorems and then show you how they work. First, let's look at the medium-sized triangle compared to the original triangle or the large one. If we set up a proportion where the long leg of the medium compared to the long leg of the large with the hypotenuse of the median and the hypotenuse of the large, we can see that what we get is AC as the means of the proportion, and therefore AC must be the geometric mean of the other two. So AC is equal to the square root of AD times AB. So AC is equal to the square root of AD and AB. If we look at the small triangle in the original, but we set it up where the short sides are compared and the hypotenuses are compared, then we see that, once again, we have the same thing in both of the means. So BC and CB are the same. So we can see that BC is a part of both triangles. We have a geometric mean where BC is equal to the geometric mean of BD and AB. Now I'm going to show you when I get through this how to pick this stuff out. Looking at the small and the medium triangle, if we set up our sides of short side to short side and long side to long side, once again we end up with CD being the geometric mean this time. And so we have another geometric mean where CD is the geometric mean between BD and AD. This leads us to two important theorems, which will make our job a lot easier. Now, I know that was hard to follow, but if just stay with me, and I believe you'll see where it's going. The geometric mean altitude theorem says that if I'm looking for the altitude here, CD, then CD is going to be the square root of BD and AD. So, in other words, the altitude is the geometric mean between the two parts of the hypotenuse. The geometric mean leg theorem says that the length of each leg of the right triangle, so the length of CB, is going to be equal to the geometric mean of the length of the hypotenuse, this whole thing from A to B, and the segment of the hypotenuse that's adjacent to the leg, so the part that makes up the angle down here, so that'll be DB. And we can get the other side too. AC will be equal to the geometric mean between the entire hypotenuse, AB, and the part of the segment that is next to it, AD. So let me try to lay out for you exactly what the last two theorems mean when it comes to solving, solving problems. What it says is that a leg 
is equal to the geometric mean of the part of the leg, so x is equal to the geometric mean between a, the part of the leg next to it, and a plus b, which is the entire hypotenuse. The altitude itself is equal to, this is a right triangle, the altitude itself is equal to the geometric mean of the two parts, and the other leg is equal to the geometric mean of the part next to it, b, and the entire hypotenuse, a plus b. So let's see how this plays out in working some problems. Here I see that I'm looking for RQ, which is Y. I know this segment is 3, the whole thing is 9, which would make this part 6. So if I'm looking for Y, it's the geometric mean of the adjacent section 3 in the whole hypotenuse, which is, in this case, 9. So my Y comes out to be approximately 5.2 the section next to it, and the whole thing. In this case, we're going to see how we could use this in a real-world application. We're trying to find how tall the gym wall is. What we do is we have a right angle here. He took a square. He turns it corner to corner, so he's looking from one corner to the other out to the wall. He has a friend measure that his eyes are 5 feet tall and his eye is 8.5 feet from the wall. Now what you can see is I have an altitude. And we know that the altitude is the geometric mean between the two parts of the hypotenuse. So according to our theorem, we could either set it up showing that 8.5 is the geometric mean where A and B are W and 5, or we could go ahead and write it using the formula for our geometric mean, which would be 8.5 is equal to the square root of 5w. Whether we cross multiply or whether we square both sides to this to get rid of the square root and then divide by 5, either way that we do this, we will find out that w is approximately 14.5. And so, therefore, the entire length is 14.5 plus 5, or approximately 19.5 feet. So here's guided practice for you to try. I urge you to pause the video and try them on your own before you see. Okay, x is the altitude, so it's going to be the geometric mean between the two parts. So in this case, that is the square root of 36, which is 6. In this other one, what we have is the geometric mean between the part of the hypotenuse that's closest to the leg we're looking for and the entire hypotenuse, which in this case is 13. So x comes out to be approximately 10 points.